Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has urged the Sri Lankan authorities to shed light on the 2019 Easter suicide bombing attacks to bring peace to the South Asian island nation. While addressing the family of the deceased and the survivors at the Vatican on Monday, April 25th, the Holy Father expressed his closeness and grieved their loss. Speaking to more than 3,500 Sri Lankan Catholics working in Italy, including a delegation of 60 Sri Lankans led by Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit of Colombo, the pontiff urged for justice and for the faithful, quote, to pray for all the victims of violence and war, especially terrorism, end quote. The pontiff also assured his prayers for the island to weather the greatest economic recession that is currently facing. Commemorating the third anniversary of the attack, Cardinal Ranjit has presided over a Eucharistic celebration at St. Sebastian's Church in Negambo near the capital on April 21. He criticized the president and his government for their failed promises to provide justice to the victims and eliminate all terror elements in the country. In an Easter message to his Russian Orthodox counterpart, Patriarch Kirill, Pope Francis expressed his hope that, quote, the Holy Spirit transforms hearts and makes believers true peacemakers, especially for war-torn Ukraine, end quote. Several Oriental churches, including the Orthodox Church in Ukraine and the Greek Catholic Church, celebrated Easter on April 24 as per the Julian calendar. In a letter published on Orthodox Easter Sunday on the Moscow Patriarchate's website, the Holy Father expressed hope that, quote, as soon as possible, the great Easter transition from death to new life in Christ becomes a reality for the Ukrainian people who yearn for a new dawn that will put an end to the darkness of war, end quote. The Holy Father also cited that the war and injustices have caused a lot of suffering to humanity. Meanwhile, in an interview with the Argentine newspaper La Nación last week, Pope Francis announced the cancellation of the proposed meeting in June with Patriarch Kirill in Jerusalem, citing that it may cause further confusion. However, the pontiff said that diplomatic efforts for peace will continue in full swing. As the fighting in Ukraine intensifies, the head of the Greek Catholic Church in the country said that Russian troops are occupying Ukrainian buildings and deporting the citizens to Russia. As the war entered the 61st day in his daily video message, Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk said that the factories taken over by the Russian army were being turned into concentration camps. He further stated that many Ukraine citizens are forced to join the Russian military troops. Within these camps, his beatitude said, quote, so-called filtering operations are carried out. Some are shot, others are deported to Russia, and others are forcibly mobilized into the Russian army, end quote. The prelate also added that the city of Mariupol has turned to be a martyr city and that it is always in his prayers. He further stated that the invaders are digging new graves in Mariupol for thousands who are being dumped into these pits. The port city has been under siege since March 1st, and the Russians are constantly shelling it, trying to complete control over it. Meanwhile, along with prayers, his beatitude also called for the intervention of international communities in the war-torn Eastern European nation. At this year's Easter Vigil, three members of the coaching staff at Ave Maria University here in Florida were welcomed into the Catholic Church. Joe Patterson, director of the athletics of the university, shared in his tweet that his colleagues, Charles Mickens, assistant football coach, Ryan Klebeck, assistant basketball coach, and Mike McCormick, head baseball coach, had become, quote, participating members of the Catholic Church, end quote. He shared a picture of the man and termed it inspiring. Joe Patterson, who was also the sponsor of Michael McCormick, said the conversions were a blessing to the university and to the church. Ava Maria University is a private Roman Catholic university founded by entrepreneur Tom Monahan. The Ave Maria University Gyrenes are the athletic teams for AMU, which is a member of the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. 
On Monday, April 25th, Pope Francis addressed the special missionaries of mercy at the Vatican's Pope VI Hall. The pontiff welcomed them back, saying he brought them to Rome to renew their missions as instruments of God's mercy. His Holiness encouraged them to receive people seeking God's mercy and console the sad and isolated. He reflected on the biblical figure of Ruth as an inspiration who was committed to the people of Israel through an oath of extraordinary kindness to her mother-in-law, Naomi. The Pope said he was delighted that the initiative continues to grow year after year. The Missionaries of Mercy are priests, from various parts of the world who were entrusted by the Pope six years ago during the Jubilee Year of Mercy with the mandate of bringing the love and forgiveness of the Father to the people. They also have special power to give absolution to serious sins that ordinarily would require consultation and permission from the local bishop or the Holy See. Sister Andre, the French nun who survived COVID-19 last year and celebrated her 118th birthday on February 11th, has become the oldest person in the world as she replaces Kanetana, a Japanese who died on April 19th at the age of 119. A convert to Catholicism from Protestantism, Lucille Randon, who was born in 1904, joined the Daughters of Charity congregation in 1944 at the age of 40 to serve the Lord, taking the name of Sister Andre after receiving the veil. She now lives in the Diocese of Toulon. Last year, before her 117th birthday, it was announced that she had recovered from COVID-19. At this age, she is now partially deaf and uses a wheelchair but manages to keep her mind active and attends daily Mass. Greeting Emmanuel Macron on his second term as the President of France, the Catholic bishops in the country have raised concerns over the intensifying political divisions in the Western European country. In an interview with Vatican Radio, the head of the French Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Eric de Molan Bafour, stated that the citizens, quote, made a choice of reason, end quote. He said the election outcome reveals that most of the people did not want to venture into the uncharted territory represented by the election of Marine Le Pen. The prelate also put forth his concerns over the political divisions in the country that intensifies with the re-election of Macron. The prelate further stated that the divisions are not geographical, but the gap between the rich and the poor. The Catholic bishops in Peru jointly released a two-page document titled Responsibility, Stability and Respect for governability in favor of the Peruvian people on April 21. In their letter, the prelates urged leaders of this Latin American country to address the precarious political climate, quote, with greater responsibility, end quote. Since 2016, there has been, quote, constant instability, which is generated by the various political actors and power grabbers, end quote. They added that their weak democracy cannot withstand instability anymore. Even though it is not the duty of the church to intervene in politics, the magnitude of the crisis facing this Andean nation has forced the episcopate to give a powerful reminder to the Peruvian president and members of Congress to, quote, assume your responsibility for which you have been elected, end quote. They also said that according to the Peruvian constitution, the president represents every citizen equally. The prelates gave a reminder that the president's job is to work for the general welfare of the Peruvian people. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.